do I look like a social worker to you? Maybe not, because so many of the images we see of social workers in the media are people who are tired and grouchy and just so worn out from taking care of the other, other people that they don't have any energy left to care for themselves. And it's <clears throat> some of the stereotype that kept me from really considering going into the social work field for a long time until I was at a place in my life where I was feeling really stuck, not sure what I was going to do with myself, and I went to see a counselor. And I was living in the little town of Skagway at the time, so 800 people or so at the max, and there was one counselor in town. His name was John. And he did not look like a typical social worker either. He was a guy, for one. And he listened really well. And he laughed really easily. And one of the things he suggested to me right away was that I consider going to the social work program that he had been in, which was the UAA Masters of Social Work program. And there was a distance version that I could take right from Skagway. So I did. I applied and I got in and I started taking classes. And about a year into that, the relationship that I was in, which was a big part of why I was living in Skagway, fell apart at the seams. And it came like it happened unexpectedly to me. So I was kind of thrown back into this dark place of not knowing again, like, what am I doing with myself and what am I doing here? And I fell back on a bunch of like unhealthy coping strategies. And one of which of those was just to like run away from my problems. So at the end of that summer, I bought a one-way ticket to South America and just left Skagway. And I bailed on the practicum that I was supposed to do with John there, just like abandoned everything. And went to South America and was still in the social work program. Luckily, it was a distance program, so I could keep doing it from like the hostels and the buses and like along the way. Um, spent a few months down there, and then I was down in at the very southern point of Chile. And my professors were like, "Hey, <laughs> you have this practicum that you have to do before you graduate, so like you've got to figure out a way to get back here." So I bought a ticket and flew back from Chile and to Alaska, landed in the Juneau airport, walked off of the plane and down the jetway and into the airport, and there in the first two seats, like walking out of this plane, was, were my ex and his new girlfriend. <laughs> and like all of the problems that I'd been trying to run away from, just like right there <laughs> where I had left them. And it was a, I mean, it was a real low point for sure, but it also, <laughs> once I worked through that like shock, was a big lesson for me because it showed me that running away from my problems wasn't going to change them and that I needed to do the work to heal them. And luckily, I was going to mental health school, so I started thinking about the things that I was learning from my professors and trying to apply them to myself. And one of the things that my professors would often say was that the client is the one who has their answers themselves on the inside. So I started to think, oh man, if I have all the answers, what are they? And like, who am I? And what is it that I want to do with my life? What is the thing that makes me the most happy? I had this moment of clarity that showed me that I was the happiest when I was moving, when I was in the mountains, and when I was motivating people. So kind of the three M's. So I started looking around for ways to bring these three M's into my life. And there was this job in Valdez that was working for the community college there running the gym. And so I applied and I got that job, moved to Valdez, and w was there working at the gym, which was a great fit for me because I was in the mountains and I was moving and motivating people. But I'm still working through my social work degree, right? So I um, got into a practicum assignment in Valdez. And one of the things, again, that I was learning in social work was that there's this social work mindset that's called the biopsychosocial model, which is um, that, <clears throat> excuse me, our biology, our physical health, impacts and is impacted by our psychology and our mental health, which is impacted by and impacts our social environment. And all three of those things interweave all the time. So here in the gym, I was like working with clients on their physical fitness, 
but like you dig just a little bit below the surface and people would start talking about all the shame that they felt about their bodies and the frustration with their emotional eating and they'd start to cry and I was seeing that in the physical fitness world there was all this um, stuff that was sort of damaging to people's mental health the like the way we talk about fitness and the way we like our culture tells us that people should look if they're fit uh, the fat negativity and the um, ways we talk about nutrition that can contribute to disordered eating and then over in the mental health world so I'd go over into my practicum then in the afternoons talk to people about their mental health and in that world I was learning that exercise is a great um, intervention for people with depression. It's just as effective as most of the antidepressant medications out there. The yoga is a great intervention for people with trauma in their backgrounds or with stress and anxiety. But even in mental health, clinicians were like giving people this information saying you should go exercise. But you know, even if you're not depressed, it's sometimes really hard to get going with an exercise routine and to stick with it. So there were some things there that weren't quite working either. And then in my own personal life, I was seeing that as part of my own healing process, I needed to look at my emotional eating. I needed to look at what was going on in my mind and my self-talk. And even in the mountains, I was seeing this play out. So in the place where I was the happiest, I at one point, so here's an example, I was um, descending, I was out hiking and descending down this really steep, rocky talus slope, so these big boulders that were kind of loose and a little bit scary, and um, going down this slope, and I had been learning about self-talk at the time, and I was able to notice as I was going down that I was saying to myself, why are we doing this? I suck at this. Why are we doing this? I suck at this, and getting more and more tense and scared. So I caught it and changed it. When we're working with self-talk, we want to change it to things that are more accurate and more helpful. <laughs> so I started saying, I've got this, I'm good at this. <laughs> and that little shift in just the way I was with myself in my head made it so I could make it down that slope and have fun and not get crushed and enjoy myself. And it made such a big impact for me that it really emphasize that these things that I was learning in my Masters of Social Work were super applicable all across the board. So I finished up my master's degree and spent a couple years working as a counselor in Valdez. And then I decided that I really wanted to find a way to pull all this in together. So I took a leap of faith in the biopsychosocial model and in my three M's, movement, mountains, and motivating people, and in the distance delivery model that I had been in in my social work degree. And I launched an online business where now I'm working with people who want to do outdoorsy stuff and they want to get strong in their minds and their bodies so that they can do the outdoor stuff with more ease and keep up with their friends and have more fun outside. And the cool thing about it is that I'm teaching mental health informed fitness now. So it's like body positive, accessible to all levels. And I think it's now because I don't look like a traditional social worker that I'm able to weave these mental health concepts into a non-traditional environment where people want to get fit. But they tend to tell me afterwards that the mindset stuff is the thing that made maybe the biggest change for them afterwards. So it's, it's been really cool and I'm super psyched to be doing it. And thank you very much.